Hey, Jack here, and uh, I'm going to show you how you can simulate a fair coin from a biased coin. Now, I don't actually have a biased coin because I'm not a con man, but what I do have are, are some pie cufflinks. And uh, these have two possible states, either they can land looking like pie or they can not land looking like pie. So uh, one state is uh, their feet are flat and the other state is everything else. Uh, now, obviously, this thing doesn't have a probability half of landing down. So this can simulate a biased coin. So the key insight um, for this problem is to notice that while the events, the coin lands on heads and the coin lands on tails, don't have equal probability, if you consider the events, the coin lands on heads, then heads, and the coin lands on heads, then tails, and the coin lands on tails, then heads, and the coin lands on tails, then tails, the middle two have the same probability because if, say, there's a probability p of landing on heads, there's a probability 1 minus p of landing on tails. So the probability of heads then tails is p times 1 minus p. The probability of tails then heads is 1 minus p times p, so they're the same. So for this method to work, what you have to do is you toss the coin twice. If it's heads tails, person A wins. If it's tails heads, person B wins. Anything else, you discard it and try again. You call it a mistrial or whatever. Okay. Um, now I don't, I don't have a camera set up that lets me view a table, but what I do have is a copy of the lovely book, The Man Who Loved Only Numbers, by Paul Hoffman, which is about Paul Erdős, uh, a Hungarian mathematician. Um, if you haven't read this book, you should definitely read it. It's fantastic. Um, there are some nice pictures of Erdős in it. Hmm. There you go. Oh, and Ramanujan, bonus. Lovely pictures of Erdős and Ramanujan. You should definitely read this book. Even some maths in it. But uh, if you're scared by maths and you just want a, an easy read before bed, then this is a good a good place to go. So we're going to simulate this, uh, and we'll say Erdős wins uh, if it lands on um, right way up, then not right way up. And we say Ramanujan wins if it ra lands not right way up, and then right way up. So let's see. And this should have a 50-50 chance. So. So that's the right way up. That's the wrong way up. So, um, Erdos wins. So we haven't actually had to uh, discard anything yet. So we'll just do it one more time just to see if we'll be lucky or unlucky. So wrong way up. Oops. Wrong way up again, I promise. Um, so we'd have to go again now. No one's won yet. So it's the wrong way up. It's the right way up. So Ramanujan would win that time. It's really, really, really important that you do the discarding thing. It's not enough to toss continuously until you get the right thing at the end. For example, say heads is really, really likely. Um, then your string of tosses is going to look something like heads, 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 tails. So the event heads, tails is way, way, way more likely than tails, heads. Um, so you have to toss it in lots of two and then discard and start again if necessary. That means that um, if the coin is really biased, this will take longer, which is kind of a pain, but it's also a nice thing in a way that, that the, the experiment sort of displays this evidence of the bias in the coin. So we thought about making a fair coin out of a biased coin, but can we make a biased coin out of a fair coin? Um, the answer is yes. And I do have a fair coin with me, so we can do it the traditional method. Um, the idea is, say we want to generate a probability of, I don't know, um, seven eighths. Then we can divide the number line up from zero to one. Um, numbers that are less than seven eighths and numbers that are more than seven eighths. And then if we can generate a random number between zero and one, then we just say, is it less than seven eighths? Is it more than seven eighths? And that gives us our probability. Um, the probability that it's exactly 7 eighths is going to be zero because there are infinitely many numbers um, there. And if we can generate numbers uniformly at random, then the probability that yeah, any particular number is zero. Okay. So here's the idea. So we want to generate a number with probability 1 over e here. This is a massively important number, by the way. Um, e, you'll know all about e, I'm sure. 2.718281828. It doesn't continue to be so predictable after that. Um, it turns out 1 over e is a really important probability because it turns up in all sorts of um, combinatorics-y questions. Uh, for example, say, 
say you've got a, a word that's ten digits long, uh, ten letters long, and you want to rearrange the letters in the word. They're all distinct letters, say. Um, what's the probability that when you've rearranged them, none of the letters are in their original place? It turns out the probability is really close to 1 over 8. It's not quite 1 over 8, but it's really close. And if you had 20 letters or 100 letters or 1,000, then it would be almost identically 1 over 8. So if we can generate a random number between 0 and 1, we can generate an event with probability 1 over 8. And here's the idea. We say that heads is bigger than tails. And every time we toss the coin, we cut our number line in half. So if we say, if we get a heads the first time, we're only going to be talking about half to one. Um, and if we get a tails the first time, we're only going to be talking about naught to half. The beauty of this is we don't have to toss the coin very many times to determine whether or not it's greater or less than one over e. So let's try. That's a heads. So we've already lost. We're in this range, so we've lost. Not uh, The event didn't happen that time. Let's do it a few times and just see. Of course at that time. That's the tails, so we're between zero and a half. That's the tails as well, so we're between zero and a quarter, so we can stop. We're definitely less than one over e. So at the moment, it's one and one. Let's do it again. That's a head, so we've lost, so two and one. Ooh. That's a head, so we've lost, so three and one. One more time. That's a head, so we've lost, so four and one. So poor old one over e. Uh, we lost a lot more times than we should have that time. But I hope you enjoyed that. Um, generating fair coins from biased ones and biased ones from fair ones. Um, this actually does have nice applications if you, you know, if you're playing a game in some dodgy bar or whatever and someone wants you to toss a coin. It doesn't matter if they're approaching you with a biased coin. If you force them to do this method, then it's definitely completely fair. Well, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, please subscribe for more because there's going to be loads of this coming. I really love doing this sort of stuff. See you later.